Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. When you hear that someone is having a blessed day, that is something really good has happened to someone else, how does that make you feel? Do you rejoice because God is blessing that person? because they have received something very good into their lives? Or does that make you unhappy? Do you say such things as, why them and why not me? That should have been my good day rather than theirs. How you respond to someone else's blessings says a lot about your spiritual character. And why is that? Because we are commanded in the Scripture to love our neighbor as ourself. So if you would like to have a blessed day, you should also want others to have a blessed day. And that situation is going to be at the center of what we're going to be speaking about today. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 20. The book of Matthew and chapter 20. Now, you may recall that last week we concluded chapter 19, and there's this verse that says, and it begins with the phrase, and many. And the word many is probably a related word to a Hebrew term, which speaks about a normal situation, the, the rule. And he says here in that last verse of chapter 19, He says, the last shall be first and the first last. Now, that's very important that we hear that, that those that came first, they're going to be last. And those that are last, they're going to be first. What does that mean? Now, if you read many biblical commentators, you will find a multiplicity of answers for that that question but when we look at the word of god it's very clear the word of god reveals to us what yeshua that is jesus of nazareth what he meant when he said the first shall be last and the last shall be first look with me to verse 1 of chapter 20. he's going to give to us a parable and more often than not parables are for the purpose of instruction. We learn something that should rule our life. Remember, I have shared with you that the term parable in the Hebrew language comes from the same word which means a government, that which rules over. And a parable provides information that should rule over our life, govern us and how we think and how we behave. So let's begin chapter 20 and verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man. And then we have a word that describes this man. It's literally a word which means a master, a ruler, a lord over a home or a state. And this state, of course, would include much land. So he's telling us that the kingdom of God, some aspect of the kingdom of God, should be likened to a master, a lord of some vast estate. And notice what it says concerning this one, that this individual, he is one that goes forth early in the morning in order to hire workers, and here's the key, for his vineyard. Now, the word vineyard is going to be emphasized in this passage. It's going to repeat many times. 
And again, if you are a good student of prophecy, and in actuality, in order to understand properly the new covenant, what many call the New Testament, in order to understand that, you need to be a good, a thorough student of prophecy. Because in prophecy, for example, in the book of Isaiah and chapter 5, the vineyard is equated to Israel, the Jewish people, that nation of Israel. And this parable is going to give you and me, the reader, some important information concerning Israel, what we should expect, and also the attitude that we should have concerning God's faithfulness, His goodness, Him blessing Israel. So this parable speaks of the kingdom of God. It is likened to a man who is a, an individual who rules over some large household, some great estate. And he goes forth at the time of the early morning with a purpose in order to hire workers for his vineyards. And after agreeing with the workers on the wage, and what is that wage? We read carefully, a denaria for a day. Now, nothing surprising here because a denarius was the normal working wage for a common laborer. So everything here is going exactly as we would think. Workers are being hired. They're going to work a full day, and therefore, they're going to get the normal pay for working that day. But notice what happens. We see that he sends them into his vineyard. And now look at verse 3. And he went out at the third hour. Now, that would be approximately in our way of understanding nine in the morning, but according to the Hebrew mindset that governs this passage, it's called the third hour. And this uh, ruler of the estate, he saw others standing. Now, this verb for standing is in the perfect. And what does that mean? It means that they had been standing there in the past, they were standing there in the present, and they were going to continue to stand there because they had a purpose. They came to be hired, and that objective, that purpose, had not been fulfilled. So they had been standing there for, for a period of time. And notice that they were in the marketplace, a common place for one to be, be hired, and they were idle, doing nothing. Verse 4. And to those he said, go away and you into my vineyard. Now, notice this. He says, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is righteous, I will give to you. Now, many Bibles simply say that which is right, but it's the word for not just correct or proper, but it's where we get the Greek word for righteousness. Now, here's something very important. Biblically, and again, prophetically, when we talk about the kingdom of God, what should come into our mind is the concept of righteousness. God's kingdom is a righteous kingdom. And this one who is the master, the Lord of this vast estate, which is likened to the kingdom of God in this parable, he says, I'm going to do that which is righteous. And he says this, and notice what, what these individuals do. It says that, that these also go out, meaning they enter into the vineyard. Look at the middle of verse 5. Again, he goes forth at the sixth and the ninth hour, and he does the same thing. Verse 6, and concerning, and this is kind of odd, and at the 11th hour. Now, the working day, most working days today, eight hours. But back then, people worked a longer day. It was a very intense, difficult labor, 12 hours. And now we're almost at the 
end of the day the 11th hour but nevertheless this one look again verse verse 5 we see that he has gone out a few additional times at the sixth and the ninth hour and now verse 6 at the 11th hour he goes forward and he finds others same thing having stood and the implication is they stood there in the past at the beginning of the day they were there at the third hour the ninth hour and they're still there and no one has hired them now think about this they're there and they remain because there's no other options they are in need of work to provide for themselves and presumably their family the fact that they have remained there shows that they have hope and secondly that they really want to work they have a proper desire so he goes out at the 11th hour he finds others having stood and here again stood idly and he says to them why here have you stood all day throughout the day idle verse 7 they said to him because no one and i want to translate this literally in the correct order because oftentimes word order shows an emphasis they say to him because no one us has hired no one us now they're in need they need a job and no one no one has given them this livelihood what we call in hebrew parnasa parnasa is sustenance for life it's a job that provides they don't have it and when you don't have parnasa you don't have livelihood you are usually very unhappy it is a difficult situation to be in it is uncomfortable and it also robs someone of dignity because they cannot provide for themselves middle of verse 7 he says to them as he did previously go also you into the vineyard and once more whatever is righteous you will receive earlier he says i will give and now to this group he says you will receive verse 8 now we come to the end of the day at the time and this is unnormal for us but at this time period in that culture at the end of every day someone would would receive their wages so you weren't paid once a month or twice a month or at the end of each week but every day at the end you would receive your daily wage and now it's the time for payment notice what happens and coming about the end of the day the lord of the vineyard now there's a change in words earlier we talked about this word which means lord master ruler of of a estate of a large home of vast property and now it changes to this word lord the same word that can refer to god and also the son of god messiah yeshua so the lord of the vineyard says to his foreman call the workers and give to them the wage so now we see at the end of the day there is a transition from those who were laboring now they had given labor and they're going to receive and what are they going to receive from the lord of the vineyard they're going to receive that which is righteous so there's a a relationship in this transition where righteousness is mediated out and he says call the workers and give to them the wage beginning from the last 
until the first. Now, what does he mean here? Beginning with the last until the first. Well, the last ones would have been those hired at the 11th hour. And the first ones would have been the ones that were hired, obviously, at the beginning of the day. And according to this ruler, this Lord of the vineyard, he has determined this is how he wants the payment to be made. Beginning with those at the last and then ending with those at the first. Now that should say something to us. That should cause us to remember how chapter 19 ended. With that statement, many meaning a norm, the, the normal situation, the rule, the ones at the first, they're going to be last. And the ones at the end, they're going to be first. That's how this parable was introduced. And now we have similar language. Verse 9. And calling the ones at the 11th hour, they received, and there's an emphatic word, each in an area. Now, wait a second. They worked one twelfth of the day, but they received a full day's page. pay. Why was that? We're going to see why it is in a few minutes. But wouldn't that be a blessing for those individuals? I mean, they wanted to work all day. They were there at the marketplace all day, standing, waiting. They were idle, waiting for someone to hire them. And it was only at the end that this ruler, the Lord of the vineyard, that he saw them and he looked upon their need, their determination, their hope, the fact that they remained there all day, and he sent them out to work. And at the end of the day, we read very carefully that they received each a denarius. Verse 10. And coming the first ones. Now, the first ones would have been the ones that labored all day. And what did they do? Well, they reckoned, they considered, they thought through the situation. And they reckoned, and notice what the scripture says, that more they would receive. Now, it's very interesting. And one of the reasons why we do the teaching we do and spend the emphasis of our time on going through word by word is because this word for reckoning, thanking, is important. Do you know it's the same word, nomos, in the verb form, and the word nomos means law or Torah. And it speaks basically about a doctrine, a, a thought, a rule. And here's the problem. Those ones who were first, they were thinking, they were calculating things, viewing things. This word law, making judgment based upon what? their own perspective, a very dangerous thing to do. Do not think that you can serve God according to your logical, your common sense decisions. Remember what the scripture says. Isaiah taught this, once again, prophecy so important, where he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. Every time that we try to reason from our own perspective, our own intelligence, to figure out what God's up to, how he would respond, we are going to be wrong. You can only be right with God by means of his revelation. What you read in the text, the word of God, when you study it properly. So these individuals, they reasoned among themselves, according to their own perspective, that they would receive more, middle of verse 10. And they received also, they, each a denaria, the same amount, verse 11. But receiving, they got, but notice, they were grumbling. 
This is a word of criticism, murmuring against this, this master lord of the estate. They were angry, and this word for complaining implies being, having ill feelings, being angry against one. Now, notice how the master responds to this. We see in verse verse 12, saying that these, the one at the end, only one hour they worked. So these ones who were grumbling, they were saying, these ones at the end, one hour they, they did, they worked. And equal to us, they you have made. And the us are the ones who bore the death. That means the main part of the day, the main part of the workday, and the heat. So they're saying, we don't get it. How is it that they were made equal to us when we worked throughout the entire day, the bulk of the day, in the midst of the heat? How can they be equal to us? Why would you do a thing such as this? Well, here's what we find. We're going to find that this this Lord of the vineyard, he thinks about not just what is, is right from a logical standpoint, but what is proper from a kingdom perspective. And the kingdom perspective involves grace. You see, these who only worked one hour or maybe three hours or six hours or nine hours, as the examples are, they all had the same need of a paycheck. They all had similar expenses. They presumably had a wife and and children, and they needed a job. And even though they worked less, the need was the same, and this Lord of the vineyard, He took that in consideration. And he wanted, and we're going to see this, he wanted to do that which was a blessed thing. And why do I say that? Well, keep reading here. Look now, if you would, to his response in verse 13. The his is the ruler of the vineyard. But this one answered, He said to them, to the ones who worked all day long, friend, I have done no unrighteousness to you. He hasn't behaved unrighteously to them. Was it not a denarii that we agreed, that you agreed with me? They agreed to work all day, 12 hours, for a denarii, the normal wage. He says, take that which is yours and go away he was righteous to them but he was also a blessing to these others he blessed them all the same because he had the same concern for all of them verse 14 he says take what is yours and go but but i if i wanted to give to these at the end also as you was it is it not lawful for me to do with what is to me what i will meaning is it not part of the law the law allows me to do with what is to me what i possess what i want to do and what did he want to do he wanted to be a blessing he wanted to meet needs He wanted to show his love, his concern, and his knowledge of the plight, the situation of others. That is his nature. And the reason why I say blessed, he is a one that wanted to bless these individuals, is because what we see in the next phrase. Look at the end of verse 15. Or, and he's questioning them, or... Is your eye evil because I am good? Now, the evil eye is not what many people believe it is. 
We are not talking about some cultural thing in, in a, a covenant forsaking, a covenant ignoring people that speak about the evil eye and such. That's nonsense. This is simply a phrase which refers to a wrong perspective. The evil eye does not see the will of God. The evil eye is against the will of God. I perspective evil that which is against God's will. And that's why he says, I have, don't be in the wrong perspective concerning me, because I am good. And what's good? Always. Always that word relates to the will of God. So he carried out God's will. And in actuality, this parable teaches us about God himself, this ruler of the vineyard. And it has to do with what God's going to do. And here's the key. Here's the message. It has to do with the nation of Israel. That, that even though the nation of Israel, they first receive God's revelation, they, they are going to come about and make that agreement, that faithful agreement, but it's only going to be a remnant and it's going to be at the end of the age. And when that happens, the kingdom of God is going to be established and we should not be an individual the church should not look at Israel and think, how dare they get it at the right, at the end, at the very end of this age. And they're going to be equal to us who have suffered, us who have, have worked and labored throughout the generations. That's right. And if we don't agree and affirm, then we don't understand the love of God and the love of God is not ruling our life. Verse 16, thus, and notice how this parable ends. Thus, the last will be first and the first last. The fact that this all took place, the vineyard, has to do with Israel. It teaches us about Israel getting right with God and finding those same blessings at the end of the age in the 11th hour. And then he says, let's conclude verse 16 at the end. Once more, for many, this is the general rule, the norm. For many are called, but few are chosen. It speaks about God's love. He calls greatly, richly, but very few are chosen. Why? Because very few agree with God. Here's the message. Take out your perspective, nail to the cross, and seek the truth, the revelation of God, and to see things from his perspective. We'll close with that. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. <laughs>